Good morning, folks. We've got our weekly podcast coming up in a few hours on the website. The sequel to Shape of the Cosmos will come out here on YouTube tonight or tomorrow. But we're here this morning, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun, once again dominated by the southern coronal hole system. We see smaller dark patches popping in and out of existence at the lower latitudes, and as we are awaiting solar wind intensification from those openings, the ambient plasma stream in geospace has eased back into considerable calm. It's dropped under 300 kilometers per second a few times there over the last day, and of course, geomagnetic conditions are all quiet with that weak solar wind. Top rumble of the last day didn't hurt a soul over 400 kilometers down near the transition zone of the mantle. 6.6 .6 is a large blot echo, and the last time they took one that big in that location was just a few days before the major 2011 rumble near Fukushima. We'll start the links today with the latest from those looking to geoengineer our sky. And folks, we normally like to lance David Keith in these coverage hits, but if he's Captain Chemtrail, Ken Caldera is Sergeant Spray out on the west coast at Stanford. For those who are new viewers here, we strongly disfavor weather modification. NOAA is taking steps to further understand the Holocene, the period since the last ice age, the last 12,000 years on Earth. They have released a vastly larger data set than has ever been created, and now it's up to researchers across the world to go start digging, and they can take their pick. Quick note here about Comet Swan. If it seems like the moment you got interested in comets, they seem to find a bunch. Welcome to the club. With a new comet discovered almost every day, at whatever point you get interested, you're going to notice how not alone the planets are in the system. Now hopefully here you can see from its arcing orbit, it does not intersect the actual orbits of any planets, and in terms of its tail material catching in the solar wind, it crosses the Earth's ecliptic plane in early May. That material will take two to three days to stream out with the solar wind, and then over a month later Earth will be in that position late by weeks to see the effects, and all while her swan dive back out of the solar system occurs past Mars. Some cool shots up next, this is the actual foot cam from OSIRIS-REx doing a test descent and scoop on Bennu. It's a practice move they are using to make sure they don't crash this thing into a million pieces, and it is a pretty impressive video that far away. Up next, we've got the final mosaic from the Spitzer team, and it comes with a 360-degree changing wavelength view of the heavens. You can click and drag around right within the video as it plays. A quick little note here on Cheops from the ESA, it is now up and running and just got its first light curve of an exoplanet. If you're familiar with the launch of this modern field with Kepler, out ahead of the more recent tests and W-first missions, the Cheops mission is much more like Kepler, just with a major, major upgrade. I'm betting they get to finding a thousand exoplanets a year within a decade. Last but not least, a key issue is coming up in plasma lab test beams that they just realized must also apply to the vastness of outer space. Perhaps nowhere more than when it comes to the distance things appear in the cosmos due to what they call gravitational lensing, which has so much more to do with the local magnetic fields and plasma saturation of the region than anything else. But the cosmic web might be subject to correction from the bias and errors the team recognized as not only invading their experiment, but invading their understanding of the cosmos as well. Just cross the streams. We greatly appreciate your support. Again, website members, don't miss your podcast today. Plan on letting loose some blazing arrows. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.